In this video, I'm going over the differences between a VPS server and a dedicated server. There are a lot of differences between the two, namely price is probably the biggest one. So uh, your VPS services are typically rather cheap. They start around five to $10 a month and then they grow from there. I've been having a VPS service for my website for about five years now and I pay roughly about $30 a month for it. However, there is also dedicated servers that exist and they are a lot more expensive than your VPS counterparts. However, you get a ton more performance. So in this video, I wanted to kind of showcase both. I actually am gonna be using my VPS that I've had for about four or five years now, and then also kind of putting it up against a dedicated server. The dedicated server is actually gonna be on a 10 gigabit connection. It's gonna have 32 threads. It's gonna be just a beast of a machine that is just gonna be solely used for this video. Now, the VPS server is obviously a shared virtual server, and I'm gonna go ahead and break down the differences between the actual VPS and the dedicated server in this video, um, because a lot of times they just kind of get thrown around, and some people people think they are considered equal or at least somewhat close to equal and that is not the case at all so uh, we're going to be going over bandwidth I'm going to be doing a trial uh, CPU benchmark it's not going to be very very precise but it's going to at least give you a ballpark and so you know what to expect when you go from a VPS to a dedicated server if you're a business but uh, let's go ahead and jump into the video because it's really really interesting to see the differences in cost and then also seeing that cost to performance this video is brought to you by data packet they have data centers around the world with dedicated servers with unshared 10 gigabit connections. It's what I'm going to be showcasing in this video today. So if you'd like to check them out, click the link in the description. So first off, VPSs, what are they? Where do you get them? All that good stuff. The probably the biggest VPS provider in the world is Amazon Web Services or AWS. Uh, AWS out there has tons and tons of them. They're the biggest name on the block. And then you got Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform. And then you also have other ones that are not quite as big, which would be UpCloud, SkySilk, those types of ones where they're a little cheaper than the big dogs, and you get a, a lot of the same type of performance, you just don't have that brand recognition. So in this video, I kind of wanted to go over a sample v VPS. So I'm going to go ahead and flash up some numbers here. I went ahead and downloaded a CPU benchmark here. I use Sysbench just using one thread. Now, I could have used more threads. However, I don't have a VPS with a whole bunch of horsepower to really do an apples to apples comparison. So what I did was I took just one thread, jammed it through Sysbench, and then I went ahead and went over to the dedicated server, which actually has 32 threads, and I only wanted to run it on one thread. So uh, that way you actually have somewhat comparable numbers, because if I did a 32 threads on that one, the numbers would have just been outrageous. It would have been literally probably 100 times faster than our VPS, which uh, is not a good comparison. So for this video, I wanted to do just a one-to-one -one type comparison. Now, when it comes to VPSs, a lot of people get confused on this point. You get vCPUs or virtual CPUs. Now, sometimes these are shared. If it's a cheap, less than probably $20 a month, it's going to be probably a shared CPU. Now, with a shared CPU, that means they oversubscribe a host or a server that all these are residing on. That means, like, let's say you have 100 subscribers wanting 100 virtual CPUs. Now, if they're all shared, they could be actually sitting on 20 CPUs available. It's just they share them between all their clients. So shared CPUs are good for, like, little bitty tests and things. But if you're a business and you're running a website or something like that, I highly wouldn't recommend using a shared virtual CPU because, again, they're oversubscribed. You can have a bad actor in there that runs something or runs a query, and then you have a huge performance drop in your site or whatever you're actually hosting on that VPS. So 
uh, shared vCPUs. Obviously, I never have used them in business. I've only used them for like test websites that might be getting 50 to 100 hits a day, you know, practically nothing. So that's uh, just good for test beds. If you're actually wanting to host a website and using a VPS, like uh, Google Cloud is what I'm going to be using in this video, they actually use dedicated virtual CPUs. That means if you have an eight core system with 16 threads, that would give 16 virtual CPUs. So when they say virtual CPUs, they're really talking about threads in most instances and not having them shared is very important to get reliable performance. I want to have and show exactly what I got out of my one dedicated virtual CPU I have on Google Cloud Platform. And I'll probably pop it up over in the corner here and zoom in a little bit on some of the pertinent numbers. Now, and that's kind of interesting to see how it responds. It does quite well. And then as far as the download, uh, let's go ahead and flash over to here. The actual download, I was downloading the entire Arch ISO, which is about 600 megs from its local data center. So I'm in the Midwest and I'm actually part of the central data center for, for Google Cloud. So this was pretty close to where this server is stored. So it's able to get a lot of that performance. Pretty darn good download numbers. Look at this. I mean, it's about uh, mid 20s on the actual download. So that's pretty darn good for a VPS. I I'm very happy with those download things. Now, if you do like an update, like an APT upgrade on an Ubuntu server or a Debian server, you'll notice that those download a lot faster on VPSs. You might even get 100 or 200 megs per second uh, when you're actually downloading through those. That's because a lot of VPS providers cache a lot of the incoming and outgoing traffic, especially when it comes to Windows updates and also a Linux updates. So important to note, so you get a lot of these benefits. You get basically plugged into the backbone, you're in a data center, and really where VPSs shine is the redundancy. Since they're all virtualized and they're shared, they're not dedicated to hardware, meaning let's say an entire rack goes out where your server's hosted, it's on virtualized hardware, and what happens is your server immediately gets spun up elsewhere. So you have almost no downtime. In the past five years, I've had uh, no downtime on my website that was caused by a hardware outage, which is pretty awesome. So with that said, let's go over to the dedicated server space. Now with dedicated, what does that mean exactly? Well, instead of a virtualized that can move around from hardware to hardware, you typically just stay within the same generation when it comes to the VPS, you get a dedicated box, a dedicated server. Now this does have some drawbacks, the drawbacks meaning you are dedicated and allocated this one piece of hardware, but what you get out of that hardware is typically inter enterprise grade equipment. Like when it comes to data packet, I know all their stuff is enterprise grade and it's sitting directly on the backbone of the internet. The second thing is you get to control a lot of the throughput. Like when you have a VPS, most of all the connections are shared. Uh, even though you have allocated that one dedicated CPU, you are still sharing a lot of the actual internet connection. So you're your speed can vary depending on the time of day. If you're doing it at 3 a.m. and there's not much traffic on a central U.S. server, you're going to get pretty decent throughput. However, if you're doing it at like 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. on a Friday and there's a lot of throughput, you'll probably get half or even maybe even a fourth of that because it's a shared connection going in and out of that data center. But on the dedicated space, you're allocated saying, hey, this is how much hardware you have. You will always have this much hardware and you have a dedicated connection coming into this server. So you'll always have that much bandwidth and it will always run at that bandwidth, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and cut over and I'll show up the actual sysbench score. This was only using one thread. Now you'll notice a couple extra lines here. That's because we actually have physical access to this hardware. One other benefit to having the dedicated space is you have remote access capabilities, especially with data packet, they give you IPMIs where you can actually get in and look directly at the console and do manual restarts. You can do a lot of things directly from it. So you can actually see what a technician would see sitting in front of the server, which is pretty powerful. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the actual specs 
on the CPU. So I only ran it against one CPU here just because I wanted an apples to apples compared to the VPS. And as you see, it's about three times faster. One, it's not running any hypervisor that it's having to run on top of. So you get a little bit of extra throughput there. And then on top of that, you just have newer hardware this is obviously running the latest and greatest generation where my vps is running i think about a third or fourth gen intel chip and that is obviously slower than than the newer stuff because on the dedicated side this dedicated actually has the absolute newest technology available so the throughput's just going to be more all around when it comes to processing speed and now let's look at the actual downloads. This is just absolutely bonkers. It downloaded the Arch ISO in a second, 1.4 seconds to be precise. And this wasn't even maxing out the connection. So that is pretty darn insane on the downloads, but that's what you get when you get a 10 gigabit connection now this server runs about two thousand dollars a month right now now obviously you can get promotions and other things so it can go up and go down it just depends on how subscribed the actual data center is obviously if they're running out of room the price goes up or if they have a lot of room they might run a sale and, and sell some of it these types of metrics is just kind of insane especially when it comes to the actual uh, internet connection. So that is really a, a quick overview of a VPS compared to a dedicated server. Now, the dedicated server is pretty awesome. If you were a big business, obviously, you would need something like this if you were doing a lot of throughput because the throughput here is considerably more, especially having that unshared internet connection is huge. However, let's talk about one of the downsides of dedicated server space. When you are allocated that server, it's using enterprise grade equipment if done properly. And what happens eventually you will run into some downtime and this is where like SLAs and other things come into a, in play uh, which is an SLA is a service level agreement and what that does is say hey when the hardware goes down they have to get it up in a certain amount of time now data packet offers 99.9% .9 uptime on all their hardware so Typically, this means usually about a two to four hour response time guarantee, but it just depends on what you're encountering. Now, in my experience on a dedicated server, anytime I've ever had an outage, which I think in my entire career on a dedicated server, I've only had one outage from a provider. I don't think I was using data packet for that dedicated server, but I think they got it back up and like... Uh, about 15 minutes or something crazy it's they have all the spare hardware to get these things back up so there's no extended period of outage on pretty much any dedicated server outage provider maybe some of the really cheap ones that are like 100 or 200 bucks for a dedicated server it's probably using older hardware and they might not have as many spare parts laying around so uh, definitely look at the SLAs when doing dedicated servers because you really want uh, maximum performance with almost no downtime and I know someone like data packet where you're paying a, a good chunk of money to do this but you get top tier performance and you get a lot of the top tier uh, maintenance as well. So like, let's say there is a hardware outage or a controller goes out, whatever it might be, typically they'll have spare parts on hand and a technician would go run to that server, swap it out, power it back up, and all would be right with the world again. So that's basically the differences between VPS and dedicated server. VPS will have a higher uptime, uh, but we're talking splitting seconds and minutes we're not talking hours here uh, in almost any reputable dedicated server uh, provider will obviously have the same type of level of service like data packet has where it has that 99.9 .9 uptime so that's the differences between them i absolutely love both solutions obviously if budget is no concern it's a no-brainer for me i'd obviously go for the the dedicated server and have direct hardware access to it i you're never you're never gonna actually sway me on this because as a system admin of so many years 
Uh, I absolutely love having that direct line of access and having control over the hardware. And that's just amazing. Uh, a lot of times getting a lot of that control, like I've had on VPSs where it just kind of runs away and I'm just like, oh crap, where's this at now? What type of hardware? And I have to do like a live migration of that hardware to another server because it starts acting up or let's say someone else on that physical server on the VPS side decides to run this huge SQL query and, and bog it down with a these giant database query uh, that can affect my server as well. So it just depends on the servers that you got going. And that's why I really prefer the dedicated server space because it's far more reliable, far more predictable when it comes to performance. So any big business typically goes this route. However, uh, VPSs do have their place when it comes to websites. I obviously love VPSs for websites. I think that's uh, pretty much a no-brainer to do a VPS for a website, but it just depends on what type of website you're doing too. There's instances where, let's say something like YouTube, obviously they're using their own servers, but to do the type of throughput, to, to broadcast video and those types of things, you'd want a dedicated server to do that because it's so intensive on that connection and you need to be for providing a level of service that is consistent across all of the metrics. So that's why you do like a dedicated server in, in that case. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below. I obviously love both these solutions. They're great. I love my VPS for my website, christitus.com. But at the same time, if I could afford a dedicated server and had need for one it would also be just fine with me to run that uh, having that hardware access is pretty amazing as well but a big shout out to my patrons without you i couldn't make videos like this one and i'll see you on the next one